I think the main reason that people avoid or shy away from keywording their images in Lightroom is because they think it's going to take too much time. Plus, we're excited and we want to get right to the editing, right? So do I. But that strategy is going to cost us in the long run, and keywording actually doesn't have to be tedious. With a little bit of effort, you can set yourself up that keywording is pretty fast, pretty easy, and in most cases, sometimes even automated. So in this video, I am going to unlock some of my favorite secrets that I think every Lightroom user should know about keywording. First, you have a few different ways you can enter keywords into Lightroom, and that means I have a few different approaches on how I can teach this. It may be a little bit of a merry-go-round ride, so just fasten your seatbelt and keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all time and enjoy the ride. What I find is when people first start using Lightroom, they know they need to keyword their images. We're going to take hundreds, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of photos throughout the year. So keywords are a way to keep ahead and try and stay organized. And what we do is we go over to this keywording panel in the library module. We open it up. We type in keywords and we hit enter and we call it a day. And that, if it works for you, is totally fine. If that's your system, that works. What I found for me, though, is that this leads to a lot of inconsistencies and inconsistencies lead for me missing photos when I try and sort and find them. So, for example, singular versus plural or synonyms. Um, sometimes I use scientific names. Sometimes perhaps I'll use autumn and other times I'll use the word fall. And this is where it becomes a little bit of a problem down the line. So what I advise doing is not necessarily using the keywording list unless you know you're really only using 10 to 20 keywords and that is it. Um, and then maybe you can stay consistent. But what I recommend doing is opening up this keyword list. And if you've never looked at your keywording list, what it is is a laundry list of every keyword that you have ever entered into Lightroom. And typically, if you've been working in Lightroom for a while and then you discover it, all you want to do is close it back up and never look at it again. But hear me out, because the secret to unlocking the power of the keyword list is the hierarchy system. So what you'll find is in the beginning, they're all in just a flat structure. But we can create structure under a hierarchy system. And that way, when I have this Philadelphia fleabane flower, what I can do, and let me go back up and show you, in the keywording list, I just have flowers and plants. If I enter and just hit Philadelphia fleabane because I have set this up, I get this, I get flower, I get plant, and all of that gets applied to the keywords. So when we go back up, it only shows me Philadelphia fleabane Bane, gosh, that's hard to say, as my keywords, because that's the keywords that I entered. But if I want to know what keywords will export or show the keywords and the containing keywords, then it'll show me all of the other ones. And these are the ones that will export. So just by clicking those things, I have all of these keywords apply to my photos. Now, how did I do that? What did I do with the setup? Let's take a look. Again, we go back down to the keywording list. And remember I said we want to do consistency and we want to eliminate synonyms. So how did I get so many synonyms? First, let's look at the filter bar and let's go with flower. What I find and what most people experience is, oh, we used flower and plant, flowers, flowers and plants, flower. So we have a whole bunch of different ways that we entered this keyword and we want to clean this up. What you can do is pick your chosen keyword. For me, it is flower. That is gonna be under my hierarchy system. This is going to be the main keyword we're gonna clean everything up with. I created a mess because that is what I find most people experience and I'm going on this journey with you. Let's clean it up together. So if you double click on any of your keywords, a dialog box opens up and here we go, synonyms. And what we can do is we can type in flower and then we can type in bloom, blooms, flowering plants. We can type in the scientific names. We can type in the French names. We can do whatever we want or whatever makes sense to your photography. You don't have to go overboard with this. But again, this is a great one for things like autumn and fall. So you choose the one that is intuitive to you that you like to enter. And then anytime you export, all of your fall photos will also have the keyword autumn. All you have to make sure you do is export synonyms is checked. 
and include on export. So that is the important part of this thing anytime you enter synonyms. So we're going to hit save on that and then we can clean up our other folder uh, keywords. So how we would do this is this is going to be the main keyword that I want. What I know is flowering plant. I have eight photos that I've used that keyword. This little arrow here, if I click it, there's the photos that have the keyword flowering plant. Now I don't necessarily want to keep this one so I can get rid of it um, or I won't re-keyword that with the keeping keyword of flower. But I will select the first one. I can hold down the shift key and select the last one. And here's the trick is first apply the keyword you want to keep, flower. Because the minute we get rid of, because again, we have a filter applied. The minute we get rid of this keyword by unchecking, they go away. And that is how we start cleaning things up. I'm not going to keep this photo, so I'm just going to uncheck it. Now I have zero keywords with flowering plant, but those keywords I wanted to keep now have the keyword flower. And all I need to do is get rid of that from my list by hitting the minus sign. So we can do the same thing again. We'll just do one more example. Let's see flowers. I have nine photos. There we go. What I will do is select the first one, hold down the shift key to select the last one. And if you want to select individuals, you can just hold down the control or command key and you can select individual photos as you wish. I'm going to select all of them again. Here we want to apply flower and keep in mind if I apply flower to all of these keywords, they're also getting plant now too. And now that I've applied my keeping consistent keyword, I'm going to get rid of flowers and it goes away and I can delete this. So that is a way to use synonyms and find your power words. Now let's look a little bit more in depth at the hierarchy system, but because we have such a laundry list and you probably would too, let's figure out what would we do to clean things up. Now with our keywords, we can have keywords that export or don't export. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just create a keyword. And because the keyword list is alphanumeric, so that means A, B, C, D, E, but numbers will come first. I'm going to just call this zero and to sort. Now, what I would recommend is anything that you say, I don't want it to be exported as a real keyword, um, but I do want it to export any containing keywords. So any keywords under it, what I will do is say, or distinguish this. So here you'll see I've used all caps but sometimes people like to use brackets, other times people like to use hyphens, but just something that is easily viewable that you know that that is not a real keyword, that's just a keyword you use to create your hierarchy or sort. So I'm gonna hit create here. And if we look and we go all the way down here, here is all in caps because that is how I decided to distinguish. I have my actual hierarchy list and I want to clean this up just a little bit. So what I will do is hold the shift key and select the top one and select all those keywords. And I'm just going to drag and drop into that folder. You'll see that the little arrow came. I can close that up and now I can select the other keywords that eventually I need to sort and find a home for. And we'll do that in a little bit, but let's first look at the keyword system. Now the hierarchy system that I have is I basically use what, when, kind of like a who, what, when, where, how. <laughs> so depending on what you have, you make up a system that works best for you. But when, for instance, would be seasons and time. Again, I'm being consistent. So we have autumn versus fall as synonyms, and they're both going to export. We have what and what in the environment for our nature and landscape photographers. We have all of these different things that we can keyword within our um, photos. And again, let's look at where, and this is a really good example of where the hierarchy comes in value. Because if you set the structure up and just build it as you go, I have a hierarchy here that when I go and visit the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, all I have to do is click one time, 
that great smoky mountains and i also get tennessee southeast united states north america all of those keywords are added to my photos so this becomes really handy because once you actually get a system down with a hierarchy you can actually group select all of your photos and you know kind of just do your big bulk buckets you can even do this upon import which makes life a whole lot easier too once you have a system down so that is the benefits of the hierarchy system how would i go about cleaning things up all i would do is open up my keyword list open up my sort list and i would start cleaning exactly how i showed you earlier so for example i apparently used animals up oh, they're actually all dogs so i will select all of them again we're going to go back down to the keyword list where i actually can say or sort and say dog and say okay here's my hierarchy list yes it was a bernie's mountain dog and actually this keyword is applied to all of them as is animal and if i open up animal yep I used all of the different names for animal, so I actually don't need this keyword. I can get rid of that and then I can delete it. And that's one keyword that I've cleaned up. And if you want, you can totally start from scratch and just get rid of those keywords and start with your hierarchy um, all over again. Now, setting up your keyword list is pretty easy. If you don't have a hierarchy system, you can actually just start typing in who, what, when, where, how open up some keywords and you can start dragging and dropping as necessary. So you can say trees are a what and just keep dragging things in as your hierarchy, you know, so we can say woods, we can say church or not church. Did I? Oh, there's Vic. Vic and church. Okay. That's where I was seeing that. But you can just start dragging them in wherever you want and then just keep going about until you make a little sense. And what I do is, you know, clean up a couple of keywords every time you come into Lightroom and eventually it actually gets done. If you're really interested in the course that I teach, which has a one-stop shop for organizing your entire Lightroom, part of the course for a limited time is actually giving my entire keyword list with all of those synonyms. So all that work is done um, free for students. Um, so that is one way if you don't want to make your own keyword list that you can get one <laughs> right off the bat. So this is all fine and good and easy if your items are already bulked by keywords, but what do you do if things are messy and not sorted easily? So let's talk about that next. So let's say we want to clean up a whole bunch of keywords. Before we get started, I want to just note one thing as we go down this route. When you have a keyword list, you can have the same keyword twice if it's within a hierarchy. So for example, I have the word keyword spring actually twice because I have it within this hierarchy and then to sort. That can cause a problem. So what I can do really quickly is clean that up. I'm going to select all of them, make sure they have the word spring applied to them, and then I can clean up this keyword. So for big keywords that you're going to use in this example, which I'm going to show you now, you just want to make sure that you don't have duplication. So we're going to go back down to our photos. And we're going to try this again, but that's the warning is we don't want duplications of keywords when we go and make this attempt. One thing you'll see a lot online is people like to use custom keyword sets. And what keyword sets are, are nine of your favorite or most commonly used keywords that you can tailor to your exact needs. You would just click edit set. You can type in anything that you want. And here I can now type in spring because I have one. Let's see, do I have, I can't find any duplicate. If you actually have a duplicate, it will show you both hierarchy structures. So that's the only thing to kind of watch out for, but you can type in, see, now I have multiple animals, but you can type in whatever you would want to use as your nine custom words or your most common words. They could be places, they can be things, whatever you want. And you can hit change. Actually, yes, I'm going to save it as a new preset. I can say 2023 landscape photography and hit create. 
and now hit change. And now instead of it just saying custom, I have my own preset that I saved with my keywords. And what a lot of people like with this is if you hold down the Alt or Option key, I want you to watch right here, you will see numbers. And as you're going through, what people like to do is say, oh, anytime I can select everything, I can just click numbers. And what they end up doing is memorizing. One is always autumn, two is always water. I find that to be really difficult, so it doesn't work for me. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to use the numbers. You can absolutely select a bunch of photos and then just click flower and then select a bunch more and hit, you know, landscape photography. Um, select wildlife and animal. So you can do this clicking this way and that way you just work with your main keywords to get in a bucket and that is a great way to get started especially if you have a bunch of photos that don't have keywords. At least you can get those big major keywords down for a majority of your photos. Alternatively you can also use a different method. I actually like to use the spray paint paint can and kind of do a couple passes through my miscellaneous photos. And if you don't see the spray paint can, go over to this down arrow here and you can add or get rid of anything that you want, but you want to have the painter checked. And what you can do with the painter is when you pick up the paint can, you can spray paint basically across your photos any of these different metadata options. So for keywords, let's just say I want to enter bird. And as I go through my photos, because keep in mind, I put the spray paint down, I'm picking it up. As I go through my photos, well, these already have the keyword, but let's say they didn't. I assign the keyword bird. I can just spray paint across, spray paint across, and keep going. I can switch it up if I want to and say, okay, we're going to do waterfall now. Let's spray paint these. And you can see the little white border. So I can know that the spray paint has worked and I have keyworded that image. And that is what I have found to be kind of easier ways to go about things. So I'll start really general even with just spring. And I'll know that I can go and spray paint all across my photos. Now, alternatively, I can put the spray paint can down. If I'm doing the big buckets again, I can select all and always go down to this list, find when, the season, and say, yes, I want all of these to have spring because they were all taken in spring. But the spray paint can is good if you want to cherry pick images out. So I do really like that option. I think it's not used nearly as often as it should be. <laughs> and it's really fun to just go through your photos that way. Now, AI for keywording is coming, but it's not quite there yet. It still takes more time to use a plugin and then evaluate if those recommended keywords are helpful to your photography. Keywords only work if they are intuitive. You have to be the one using that keyword because down the line, you're going to be the one typing in your catalog to search for photos. So it only works if it's intuitive for you. At least for the time being, I'm sticking with these methods here. Number one, where it makes sense, create a hierarchy structure. That way you can only enter one keyword and get multiple keywords through. Pair that hierarchy structure with synonyms and that way you can streamline all of your keywords overall, where you're only entering a couple, but you're exporting a whole bunch. You can use keyword sets, and they are great for your commonly entered keywords. If you happen to be a keyboarding numbers person, then hold down that Alt or Option key, and then you can keyword by those keywording set numbers instead of having to click on them. And last but not least, number five, you can use the Spray Painter can and have some fun to bring order to your piles of miscellaneous photos. That's a great taste of some easy and fast ways to unlock the power behind keywording your photos in Lightroom. I hope you found something new to use in your workflow. And until next time, cheers to a happy Lightroom experience. 